ideas to action. I remember quite clearly the day when I got my idea. Uh, it was uh, May 1997. Uh, I was in the US at that time, and I had this idea that, hey, I want to come back to India, do something in India, and maybe become a teacher. And I shared that idea with my friends, my colleagues and classmates who were there, and that idea was met with a round of laughter and skepticism. Why did they laugh? Well, to just give a little context perspective, so we were all graduate students, uh, graduated from very good universities in India. Uh, we, were, we had finished our PhD in the US, and we were very well settled and having great jobs in the US. And um, my friends were very convinced, very sure, that this idea of mine too would be a victim of the N plus one syndrome. What is this N plus one syndrome? Uh, you may have done it in your everyday life. Uh, you may have woken up one day and said, hey, I'm going to start exercising from tomorrow. Every day, 45 minutes of gymming and exercise I'm going to do. You go to bed, wake up next morning, and you know, you don't feel like doing it. You'll say, hey, let me do it tomorrow. I'll start everything. I am going to do exercise. I'm going to work it out. I'm going to do my work, but I'll start it tomorrow, N plus one. And the next day comes, it gets pushed by one more day. So my friends were all very sure and certain that, hey, this idea too will be a, a victim of the N plus one syndrome. But just to keep it in, in, in perspective, uh, why was this desire there to come back to India? Uh, I was working there and I was having the time of my life. Wonderful country, wonderful experience, great respect, great job, lovely friends. Honestly, nothing I could complain about. But there was just one thing. There were occasions and times when you meet people and they would talk of your country, they would talk of India in a very belittling tone. And when that happens, it would really hurt us. Now human beings are such that in India, we will sit and complain about India, curse about India, say India is very bad, your, mother, your, your, your motherland. But the moment you're outside India and someone else points out the faults over here, you become extremely patriotic, you become very defensive, you become very angry and you don't like it when they talk about your motherland like that. And I feel I should do something about it. There's no point sitting there being angry about it. If you don't like it, go fix it. And that is the genesis of my thought, of my idea saying, hey, I'll come back to India, do something to help India. And the only thing I thought was I could be a teacher because I was not rich, I was not a political person. I didn't have any influence. I said, I'll be a teacher and do my little bit in helping the country as a teacher. Six months later, December 97, I sold everything, resigned my job, packed up everything, and came down to India to get my life started as a teacher. And now if I look back 25 years uh, since, and I look back at that decision, I think that was the best decision of my life. Extremely uh, grateful that I took that decision. And so my little learning from this, for all the people who have ideas over there, it's nice to have a conviction behind that idea to help you get over the inertia. Ideas are there. There'll be lots of reasons why they don't get accomplished. Have that conviction and that will see you through the starting phase. So 98 came back, became a teacher, started teaching, had 40 students. I was teaching them physics. I'm a mechanical engineer, but I love teaching. So I started teaching physics, met my wife, and together, we started our journey, um, started a tutorial, went on to more tutorials, then started a college, went on to many more colleges, started a school, went on to many more schools, been very, very blessed, very lucky, very fortunate. Uh, today, we have many institutions, and we have over 1,000 colleagues and teachers working with us, uh, educating and teaching children. Now, for someone who looks at us from outside, who looks at this journey from outside, will say, hey, man, these guys had a lucky Kush journey, a bed of roses. They've been very successful and success has come to them so nicely, so easily. I wish I too was like that. The sad truth is that behind every entrepreneur, behind every successful journey, there is a lot of heartache and pain. Nothing comes easy. Nothing comes in a platter. There are going to be lots of ups and downs. Uh, when a person is alive, you look at his ECG, 
it's not a flat line. It has ups and downs, ups and downs. The only time it's going to be easy and smooth and calm is when it's goodbye and you're no more. Every entrepreneur has gone through those extremely trying moments, difficult times, no money available, um, things have not gotten done. When you start doubting yourself, that, hey, Baba, did I do the right thing? Did I really take the right step in leaving everything and coming and doing this idea of mine? I was so well settled, I was so comfortable. And I took that plunge and did this. A lot of self-doubt comes, a lot of um, uh, difficulties come. And one thing I've realized in my journey is, uh, hey, when those difficulties are there, as long as you have that clarity of purpose, you have that determination to do it, and you're doing something genuinely good, Help will come from strange places to make it happen. In numerous examples in our own lives, in our own journey. Uh, like I said, uh, we are not uh, influential people, we are not political people. As a middle class boy, studied well, got degrees, came back to India, became a teacher. And as one of the uh, examples I want to share, one of the instances we decided to start our own institution college, uh, which is affiliated to the Board of Education. So if you want to get your permission to do your classes in the Board of Education, you need a license from the Education Department. And so I followed the procedure, got the application, filled it up, and submitted the request for a license to start a school or a college uh, in, in, that, in that state. And I thought that was it. Apply Kardia, now just wait for the application to come, they'll call and give it to me. Little did I know that India doesn't work that way. Anything to be done with the government needs a lot of follow-up and and engagement to get the job done, but we were innocent. We didn't know anything. We just started our, our life journey over here, and I was waiting for the license to come. And time was running out. The academic season was going to start. We had admitted our students. Building was constructed, and the license was not there. One fine morning, actually one night, I get a call out of nowhere, random. I get a call from the education minister's office saying that, Srila, please come tomorrow to the education minister's house. And my wife and I rushed next morning to the minister's house. We waited there for 10 minutes, and then the minister called us in, and he said, Sridhar, I see you have an application here for a college. Elections are coming two months from now. The election code of conduct will come into place, and I don't want people like you all to suffer, so I have summoned all the files. I'm personally signing every file now, and here is your license to start your college. Out of nowhere, out of the blue, the education minister, Professor B.K. Chandrasekhar, a wonderful gentleman, called, got the order signed, and gave it to me and other people who had also applied for the college to get it started. I say this is divine providence, and I strongly believe that, hey, if you want to do something good, you're sincere about it, you work hard, the universe will conspire to make it happen. I deeply believe that my wife joining me in my journey was also the universe conspiring to make it happen because I'm the dreamer. I have ideas, I dream. Uh, she's the one who acts and gets it done. Without her, definitely this journey would not have been possible at all. Uh, universe works in strange ways to make sure things come behind to make it happen. So we have our multiple schools and colleges now. They are running well. Two years ago, we started uh, kindergarten to 12th standard schools itself, CBSE schools. Now you may ask, why would you want to start a school? There's so many schools in India. What difference are you trying to make by starting a school? Now, if you go back and look at the school system in India, it was started in the 1800s by the British with a very simple agenda. They, want to create, they wanted to create a series of people who can understand English and very importantly, who will blindly obey orders. The education system was created to make sure the English have lots of people under them who will systematically do what is told and never question or ask why. And that is what you have in your schools. I'm a product of the schools. No child can question the teacher in the school. It's considered like you're insulting the teacher, trying to show off or act smart. The teacher of the sage on stage is just giving knowledge and your job is to write it down, memorize it and regurgitate it in the examination to prove that, hey, I am knowledgeable. But the facts that the child learns today are honestly irrelevant because of the little device called the phone in your pocket 
all facts and information are available. Just learning facts doesn't help a child. And with the advent of AI, the world is going to be so much more different. Things are going to be disrupted that the child today, 10 years from now, when he comes to the workspace, if he says, tell me what to do, sir, I will do it, he will have no future. The only child who's going to be successful in tomorrow's unknown future is a child who can think for himself, solve problems, and think and, and, and be creative. And so in the two years that we've been running our schools, we spent a lot of time and effort creating content which builds up these skills in our children. Creativity, critical thinking, communication, and content. Through various flagship programs that we have, it's called uh, inquiry-based learning, experiential science learning, learning by design, and mastering communicative English. We've created all the content, technology, and items to get it done. And we are happy to share this information with many more schools. Schools that feel that, hey, I'm not happy with the education system. I need to get my child ready for the future. Any school is things that way. Please reach out. We are delighted to share our content, our technology, and our learnings. Today, we have four schools with 2,000 students. But I dream of a time, 2,000 becomes 20,000 students, 2 lakh students, and hey, why not 2 million students? So to all those folks there with an idea, who are standing there debating what to do, I just have three simple messages to you. Number one, be committed. Have that commitment which will help you um, overcome your inertia. Uh, number two, um, be sincere, have faith. Be sincere, work hard, put your effort, the universe will conspire and help you get to where you want to be. And lastly, um, dream big. Be audacious, aim high, aim large, and certainly you too can transform the world you are living in. Thank you very much, and God bless you all.